we've dug some important sites on Time Team, but they don't come much bigger than this, because this is Westminster Abbey. <laughs> Westminster Abbey is the setting for coronations and state funerals. It's packed with the tombs of centuries of monarchs, poets, architects and politicians. The people responsible for shaping the history of Britain. The abbey standing today is largely the ambitious design of King Henry III in the 13th century, although it bears the scars of centuries of renovations. But there's one crucial piece of his original design that's missing, because he built a sacristy, a huge stronghold said to have housed the biggest collection of treasure this side of the Alps. And amazingly, this important building vanished. And we've got just three days to find it. Henry III began to build Westminster Abbey in 1245. It was one of the most expensive building projects of the Middle Ages, and set Westminster on course to be the political centre of London. Whenever there's talk of a time team coming to London, you back off. That's one. right. But you're yeah. here. Because of Westminster Abbey, you know, it is the great Benedictine Abbey in the country, one of the biggest. We're looking for a sacristy. Yeah. Now, yeah. Am I right in saying that that's the room where they kept all the stuff for the services? Yeah, where they kept the uh, the chalices and patterns and where the, the copes for the clergy to wear are kept, where all the paraphernalia really for the services is kept, so a really important room. Warwick, do we have any idea where this sacristy actually is? Yes, um, the, the, the sacristy, or what they thought was the sacristy, was discovered by accident in 1869 when uh, Sir Gilbert Scott was working on this area and repairing the building and, the, and particularly this north porch, and they lowered the ground level all round this side and bumped into walls. And this is the plan they produced here. That's in this area yep, here, it, this L it's, shape it's, in here, from the right door to the us. north yep. porch. So do we think it's all still here, just under the grass? Well, we, we hope it is still there, but there is, there is a little hitch in that um, Scott also ordered the construction of a vaulted chamber down here um, in, in this area, and then it was demolished again not many years later. We've suddenly been overcome by gloom. We're not going to find anything, are we? No, no, I think it's extremely unlikely that they dug everything out. And if we did find the sacristy? If we found Henry III's sacristy, that would be absolutely fantastic. You'd be happy? I would be very happy. Please do it. <laughs> Better get on, then. Even if the walls are still there, we're a bit worried they may be nothing to do with the sacristy. Because, incredibly, later in the post-medieval period, there were houses and workshops built right up against the abbey on the same footprint as the supposed sacristy. Where do we think our sacristy is? Where ours, we think, is this... L-shaped building north of the nave where the north transept is. There is another one, of course. Where? Down here. That's the more normal place to find it, off the south transept, right at the point where you can all troop in with all the vestments and, and, and gear into the east end of the church, right next to the chapter. So that's where you'd expect it. It's really hard to have a second one, and it's very hard to have it in that position there. If we did find it, how important would that be? Oh, well, I think it would be enormously significant. Would it be fair to call it a find of national importance? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, it's a, it would be a major find for church archaeology, no doubt about that. This doesn't look like occasional light shows. No, <laughs> no. that's saying, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The good news is geophys have found some wall lines. Starting at the top, the near surface, yeah. it's an absolute nightmare. But, as ever, there's a problem. And it's not just the miserable weather. All these lines are services. Oh, crikey. Electric cables, maybe pipes, telephone cables. But with regard to what you want to find, if you ignore those for a moment, go deeper into the ground, deeper into the radar, look at these wall lines starting to show. Oh, right. <laughs> and these match... That's yours, isn't it, Warwick? Exactly yep. with yeah. what you wanted, yeah. Warwick. There's the cross wall at that point there. That's wonderful. I think we should try and pick up the line of, of this wall, that one, there. that one there, and we're, um, if we run a trench down there, it will also pick up the cross wall here, 
yeah. it will pick up the the raft on which it looks as though the whole transept is built a great stone raft and it will pick up the the edge of this uh, area that looks like the vaulted chamber so we'll get a whole lot of things from the 13th century onwards uh, all in one trench It's an ambitious shopping list Warwick's given us, especially if we've got to dodge the services. Copper strip, as I'm sure. The sacristy we're looking for was said to be built on a grand scale, just like the rest of Henry III's abbey. And our historian has discovered that his inspiration was partly this man, Edward the Confessor, the last great Saxon king, who had built an abbey here himself 200 years earlier. Henry is mad about him. He kind of dresses like Edward the Confessor. He has pictures of him in his bedchamber and he calls his son Edward. Would you define the Abbey as a shrine to Edward the Confessor? It is a shrine to Edward the Confessor, but it's more than that. It's a grand political statement of power. I mean, look at it. It's massive. And it's a very international place. Um, Henry decided to build this after he'd been to France, and there he'd seen the, these kind of three separate cathedrals, one where people were crowned, one where they were buried, one where it was sort of particularly religious. And he decided to wrap all this into one big super building, which is Westminster Abbey. So Westminster Abbey's role as a theatre for royal ceremonies would have made a huge sacristy an absolute necessity. <laughs> we just need to find it. Oh, well. Still, if we do nothing else the next three days, we should be able to give them an up-to-date <laughs> map of their services. <laughs> Hello, what the devil's that? We've got lots and lots of images. Helen's wading through drawings and plans relating to our site to try and find out why the Victorians thought it was Henry's sacristy, but they're not proving all that helpful. This fantastic plan from 1870 is very clear in showing these lovely walls and they're described very nicely as well. But they, a lot of them are completely different depths. When you look at this section drawing, you can see that, um, that they're, they're different depths here, but the, how these are drawn doesn't bear any relationship to how they're described. So we don't quite know how to, how to reconcile the two. To find out what's really going on, there is no substitute for archaeology. Oh, wow, look at that. It's good news in the trenches. Some, some have been cut in there. Because it looks like the Victorians have left some walls for us to look at. What we've got to do now is hope that we find... Ooh, find the other edge of it on this side. It's quarter to 12, day one. Inside, the visitors are teeming in. Outside, the rain's teeming down. And they've just started digging trench one. Will we find the missing piece of London's greatest abbey? We'll know soon. Westminster Abbey's sumptuous design nearly bankrupted Henry III when he built it in the 13th century. Most of it's still standing, but there's one important room missing, his great sacristy. Despite terrible weather on day one, by the afternoon, Phil's found some walls, although he's not convinced they're anything to do with the sacristy. When you look at the stonework, it looks very fresh. I can't really believe that it is the sacristy. No, it, it, it definitely isn't, not yet. But then you tell me it is not part of this much, much later cellar that we know appears on the plans. If you look at those plans, you can see the wall line coming out here. That's to that point there, and it shows the cellar on this side. And if you look at the radar, the radar shows the cellar here. There's no doubt about that. I think that feature there might be stairs going into the cellar. That's do we care about this cellar if it's much later? Yes, what we've got to do is establish where we are on this plan. So if we can prove those are stairs, then we know that we're on the money. The dig's really beginning to get underway now. Phil expands the trench to check whether John's right about the position of the cellar. <laughs> That's not very old, though. And once we've located the walls on Scott's plan, we can start to work out whether or not they belong to Henry's sacristy. Well, I reckon whether you like it or not... Concrete capping? That's as far as you're going to go down for a while. 
we're going to need some pretty convincing archaeological evidence, because on paper, this building looks nothing like an archetypal sacristy, which should be tucked away securely in the heart of the abbey. This is the original sacristy, which was built even before the one that we're excavating for. But what is it about this place that defines it as a sacristy? Well, sacristies have to be very secure because they have all these valuable treasure in them. So the door that you have just come through uh, was originally three doors, one beside another, lots of bolts, lots of locks. Then the walls are very substantial, there's a stone vault on the roof, there are no doors, no windows that lead to the exterior. So it's a highly secure space. You've then got these arches in the wall, you see, so you could set cupboards in with the chalices and patterns, uh, you know, gold and silver, and they could have been locked. So that's more security as well. But virtually everything that you've told me that defines a sacristy is hanging off the walls. Well, when we dig down, we're not going to find any walls, so it's going to be difficult for our archaeologists specifically to identify what they've got as a sacristy. Well, that's where we have to um, try and marry the archaeological evidence with uh, documentary evidence uh, and study it in a general sense from, uh, from what we know uh, elsewhere. Uh, it, w it will not uh, turn out to be a building like this with a great vault on it. Brilliant. If we can't identify Henry's second sacristy, this dig could be a complete washout. More sewage pipe. Thank God, I think. There's a real prospect of three rainy days in London on one of the most important sites in the country, and all we'll have to show for it is a Victorian cellar filled with centuries of rubble. One bit of good news, though, is that the documents confirm that Henry had definitely planned a second sacristy. There's a reference here in Letherby's book, Westminster Abbey and the King's Craftsman. Now, this says that the King issued a command that the sacristy should be built 120 feet long. That's huge. Mm, it is, isn't it? <laughs> How does that tie up with the stuff we've got on this plan of 1869? Let's see. That is 120 there. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. I mean, that, yeah. that's not even 100 feet long. It's, it's a completely different length. But, it, but even just shy of 100 feet, it's still a very large building. I suppose what this says is that the king commissioned an enormous building. I mean, we don't know that it was actually yeah. built 120 mm. feet long, do we? Well, exactly. Yeah, and then, look, he goes on to say, a large sacristy was certainly required for the vast treasure which Matthew of Westminster says was unequalled on this side of the Alps. So they certainly had a lot of stuff to store. <laughs> that could explain the size of the sacristy but it certainly doesn't explain its puzzling location. Right, this trench has really come on. I mean, we, Phil we... thinks he's found two features shown on the plan, which he reckons are entrances to the Victorian cellar. So we've moved over here, and look, we've just come down onto this with this layer of concrete. Wonderful, because I think that is the roof of the vaulted chamber that was built by Sir Gilbert Scott. And we have the accounts telling us about building the vaults and then concreting over the top of them. OK, so far, so good. But the crucial question is, is this the medieval wall? I mean, it certainly doesn't look like it. Down here, it's actually got bricks in it. Yeah, it doesn't look like it yet, but the medieval building was reconstructed as a house, and, there, and hence it, it, we've got post-medieval brickwork on the foundations. So you think, think that if we go down, if we can go down yep. beyond, lower down that wall, we should actually find the line we, of the medieval we wall? We should hit the medieval wall um, below that, yeah. Our search for the sacristy is complicated by so many centuries of usage reflected in the finds. At a Tudor green, which comes in about 1380, but most of it's 15th century. Can uh, you see that thing? Yeah, it's beautiful. So it's really, really finely potted and, and, and highly fired. And also a bit of medieval floor tile. Now, yeah. that could easily be 14th century. Yeah. So it's about the only stuff we're getting from the medieval period so far. But I see there's an awful lot of bone in this tray, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, some of it's, some of it's animal bone, but we also have human bone and there's bits of finger bone, oh, and that's a bit of somebody's big toe there. Well, so, this is all kicking around in the top side, Yeah, it's, it's all just redeposited and it's fractured and broken. But also what we've got are these, they're like little brass studs, and they're the kind of thing that you've got in the top of usually 18th century coffins as decorative stud work. Yeah. So, you know, the fact we've got both these and the bones suggests that we've got at least 18th century burials that have mm. been disturbed. So there's clearly a lot of history to sift our way through before we can find out what was going on here in the 13th century.
when Henry built his great abbey, his centrepiece was the shrine to his idol, Edward the Confessor, who'd been canonized a century before. So important was this memorial to him that Henry gave instructions for his own tomb to be placed next to it. This was one of the great shrines of England um, to which pilgrims came from far and wide and their aim was to come and to see and to touch and to uh, get spiritual um, power from the body of Edward the Confessor um, who's inside here. And that's what the steps are for here and these niches. So you, you would kneel and pray at the niche. Contemporary accounts describe this in really splendid terms. They talk about it glistening and gleaming. I don't want to be rude, but it is slightly dull now. What we see today is the stone shell made of perfect marble, uh, which is the frame that held all the decorative detail. So is it the naughty pilgrims who've been picking off all these bits of glass then? Well, I'm afraid that it is. Um, uh, initially pilgrims, but later on visitors, I think, in later centuries. But you, you've got a bit left over we've there. Got, we've got a bit left there. I mean, that is a, a, a hint of what it looked like. And you must think of that over the whole of this. Everything was full of this glistening detail. And so it would have as a great beacon. Henry was an avid collector of relics, such as a thorn of Christ's crown, an impression of his feet from the ascension, as well as a grisly array of saints' bones. It's no wonder he needed a supersized sacristy. And we might just have the first signs of it in the ground. Some, somehow or another, there's something running out that way. And this wall lines up with that one. And Phil Strange, doesn't exactly it? Exactly online. Yeah. The funny. Abbey was built nearly 800 years ago, and I think we've got just about every one of those 800 years represented in this trench. But very importantly, we've got a couple of finds which could well come from the very early years of the Abbey. What are they, Paul? We've got a couple of bits of medieval pottery. It's Kingston ware, and it's absolutely what you'd expect to find in London between about 1230 and about 1260, 1270. This building was supposedly built in 1245, so this bracketed it beautifully. Where did you find those? They came from right down there in the corner next to that wall. This is bang on the money, it isn't is, it? It is. And if you don't think that's exciting, Phil, what have you got in your part of the trench? In here, Tony, we've got part of the original raft on which this beautiful abbey was constructed. And if these foundations are medieval, then you will see as they come along, they turn around there. It looks like we could have our first medieval wall. So if we've got a medieval wall, have we got a medieval building? And if we've got a medieval building, could it be Henry III's long-lost sacristy? We'll find out tomorrow. 8.30 in the morning, and it's another normal day here at Westminster Abbey. There'll be four services in here today, between three and 4,000 tourists looking at the 3,000 plaques and monuments and burials to the great and the good which are inside there. Although, actually, it's not quite a normal day because in addition to all that, we've got the time team digging a great big hole right there. We're here because of the work of Victorian architect Sir George Gilbert Scott. During his renovations here, he discovered the remains of a massive L-shaped building. We're trying to confirm that it was Henry III's 13th century sacristy. We, we do appear definitely to have medieval walls. We've got this wall here that is actually sitting on top of the main raft of the abbey. You can see there it's, it's built out of chalk, and we've got a similar wall of similar construction with chalk in it running through there. And that does tie up with what's on Scott's drawing. We've even got the curve behind Matt, which is of, of the stairway, which is shown on Scott's drawing. But the crucial thing is that now we're beginning to look at all these things, we realise they are more than one date. They are, they're multi-phase, not like the drawing says. Scott clearly misinterpreted the date of some of the features he found, so we're putting in more trenches to check out exactly which walls are medieval. Much of what we've uncovered so far relates to post-medieval buildings which were built on top of the sacristy. And in Trench 2, Faye's getting a little taste of life in those later houses. Oh, that's lovely. Um, it's borderware. It's the bog-standard pottery in London from about the mid-16th, the end, getting towards the 18th century. And it's a frying pan handle. I mean, it's, uh, it's a skillet. 
Lovely. That's pretty cool. So ties in about when the house is supposed to be here? Yeah, yeah, that works. It's in pretty good nick, actually. I mean, you can even see what's been used. See the way it's all blackened underneath. Yeah. So that's the side that would have gone on the fire. So, you know, you'd, someone had their uh, their fried eggs for breakfast out of that, maybe. Bacon, and, sausages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That works. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it works for me. <laughs> It looks like we've got a lot of later stuff to get through before we reach the medieval levels. The great sacristy that we're hoping to find is an example of the abbey's extraordinary design, which Henry never lived to see completed. This was going to be one of Henry III's chapels. It's 50 feet above the floor of the abbey, but it was never finished because these high chapels went out of fashion. But I've come up here to show you how much this part of Westminster is at the epicentre of English royal power. Over across there is the Houses of Parliament, and underneath that was the old Palace of Westminster, which was Henry's favourite palace. He actually lived there. And in those days, there was no road there. There was just a wall. So he'd come out of his palace, through a little gate in the wall, straight to here. It was like having a very large office at the bottom of your garden. Living in the palace also meant that Henry could keep an eye on his builders. And in Phil's trench, we're getting an idea of the logistics of constructing his great abbey. We can now see that this wall here, which we've always been calling medieval, and which we still think is medieval, is actually built on the raft and is actually butts up against the basal course of the main abbey, so it is of a later date. We still think it's medieval, but later medieval than the construction of the abbey itself. But what is new and very interesting is that you can see that this is actually part of a wall, and you can see there's got an edge running across there. And that face is actually visible continuing in here. Do you see yeah. there's this little raised yeah. step of mortar? Yeah. And that implies that there was once a wall coming across here blocking off between these two buttresses, apart from the main wall that we know was running from east to west. Is this what you'd expect, Warwick, or is this all new stuff? This is entirely new. We had no idea that there was going to be a wall running between the buttresses here. So that suggests that the, the foundation for the north transept in the 13th century, when that's put in, mm. they're already thinking of this corridor, yeah. this room going off. And in fact, that block there that looks like the base of a doorway is part of a doorway that was built into the wall at that stage to go off in that direction. It certainly looks like that, uh, because, I mean, you have to remember that when you're building something like this, you put the raft in, you build the great mass of the transept, and you might leave uh, connections ready for when you're going to add these yeah. other lower appendages, and then th when the scaffold comes down, you then add these lo lower level chambers. <laughs> If there was a doorway in Phil's trench, there must have been another one out of the north transept. But there's no sign of it on the exterior today, thanks to centuries of refacing. Nor can you see where Henry's build came to an end at his death in 1272, halfway down the old Norman nave which was still standing. But on the inside, you can see where the work resumes to complete his design a century later. There's a junction. Oh, yes. You see, to the left, right. Henry III, yeah. rich, rich surface decoration and all the Purbeck marble shafting. Mm, yes. You go into the extension, as it were, not yes. much, just Hot. quite plain. <laughs> just look at the contrast yeah. there. That, that diapering is absolutely incredible, isn't it? I mean, just the cost of, of all that chiselling must have been incredible. Well, it's not only the chiselling, you're going to paint it then and gild it. Mm. So where does that take us to on the plan? Well. The Henry III work got as far as there. So they built that buttress? Yes. OK, so are they in blank space around here, then? No, 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 it's, there is still a, a nave here. Mm. It's the Norman nave, and they're gradually replacing each bay of that as they go along. Right. But that's slightly narrower than the building we've got at the moment. So our L-shaped structure straddled the join between Henry's rebuild and the old Norman nave and it would have led it to both ends of Henry's fabulous newly built part of the abbey. We've now found medieval walls in all of our trenches, but we're lacking hard evidence of a sacristy. This is the place to view it from, isn't it? Yeah. You can actually see the wall of the sacristy from up here, can't you? Yeah, we've got a line of it in, in one 
trench over here, and then Faye trench got the other bit. Mm. But I, I really do wonder if it's the sacristy who's done. What? We've been digging <laughs> for one and a half days. I know. We know it's there from the documents. We know it's there from the documents, but this actual position is the result of the Victorians interpreting these foundations as the lost sacristy. What worries me is that this is effectively either half a cloister or just a stone corridor. But is it going out to something that we don't know about, that, that, that's never been found? I can't believe that we're on a site of international importance <laughs> looking for Henry III's sacristy, yeah. and we might just have some manky old corridor. Yeah, I can't help that tone. That's the reality of it. Oh, come on. <laughs> if Mick's right, we haven't found the sacristy yet, but it might be at the end of the corridors on the other side of the path. In which case, it should show up on the geophys. But whatever our building is, we're getting below the foundation levels. There's been quite a few bits of disarticulated bone yeah. out here. There's been bits of skull, bits of foot bone. And now we're getting hints of the earlier history of the abbey. So it suggests that whenever these things were put in, whatever date these are, um, they have cut through early, earlier burials, which may, like I say, on the basis of that and the level we're at, be associated yeah. with that that original professor's building. This is potentially important archaeology, because precious little survives of the abbey Edward built before Henry, depicted in the Bayer tapestry. And as if that wasn't enough, Mick suspects there might be some even earlier burials on the site. There were two burials about here on the 19th century plan, but there's no sign of them. They either got rid of them, which they said they didn't, or they're further down. My bet is that they are probably are much further down. I yeah. mean, let's be honest, if they took them away, we would expect to see the, the cuts from the backfield graves. Yeah. I think they must be further on down. And the other thing about them is they're on a different alignment to the present abbey and all these walls. And of course, the, the possibility is they're aligned on a, on a much earlier church, which would have to be a Saxon church, because it'd be early then with the confessors. And if we find more burials of that date, that would be absolutely fantastic. These burials might represent the first solid archaeological evidence that there was a church here before Edward the Confessors, because early Saxon churches were often built on a slightly different east-west alignment. But as exciting as all this is, it's not helping us with our search for the sacristy which is beginning to feel a little desperate. Uh, is, this is a handwritten note <laughs> in a book, but it's been written by Mr Westlake, who was writing a book himself in the early part of the 20th century, and he's written down Sacrist's account for 1535 for pitch, rosin and canvas for mending of a pipe in St Margaret's churchyard, carrying to the sextry threepence. Sextry I've checked up, and it's an alternative spelling, if you like, oh, of, right. of the yes. word sacristy. Mm -hmm. Now, St Margaret's, I would have thought, uh, that this shows St Margaret's, on the north side. Mm -hmm. So surely if the pipe is being mended in the churchyard, it must have been running across to a sacristy somewhere around here. But why couldn't it have just gone to the north side of the abbey on that side of the transept? Oh, I hadn't thought of that, to be honest. Oh well, back to the drawing board. <laughs> <laughs> it's so frustrating. The documents only tell us that the sacristy was somewhere on the north side. Mick? Look, I've got the geophys from uh, the grass over there. Yeah. Look. Let's hope this new geophys can help locate it. It's rubbish, isn't it? What do you mean it's rubbish? Well, this is the demolition rubble from the houses that stood here until the 19th century. Oh, you mean it's literally rubbish? Exactly. There's no walls or structures that we can see within that. So, as far as you're concerned, the sacristy probably isn't there. There's nothing we can see that indicates that. Well, look, yeah. in Faye's Trench, medieval, right? Yep. Which yep. tallies He's with that. that. There, yeah. 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 Over yeah. there, in Phil's Trench, yeah. that bit there. This is joining the dots, isn't it? Yeah. Over there, we've got oh, this... Tracy's Trench here, there, yeah. In this little trench by the digger. That's where we actually that was, bit yeah. There. yeah. Look, bish, bash, bosh, bash, job done. There's your sacristy. All that proves is that we've got medieval walls in those places. It doesn't demonstrate it's a sacristy. This looks to me much more like a corridor or a cloister. All right, but you tell me 
what piece of church architecture exists that is this funny little corridor which comes off at right angles outside of an abbey and disappears back in there well, again? A covered walkway is what it looks like. I know that's What's not... its function? I don't know, but it, it, that doesn't mean... It's not it's an just... old National Health Hospital, you know, <laughs> going from... Ward it's, it's, G to Ward F. It, it doesn't mean it's a sacristy just because we don't know what it is. It, the sacristy could still be somewhere else in the area. It might, for example, be over there by the north door of the, the north transept. All right, I'll buy that as long as you put your thinking cap on tonight and work out if it's not a sacristy what this could be, all right? Oh, I shall have a glass of wine. That helps me think a lot better. Our search for Henry's sacristy may be falling apart, but just before the end of the day, Dave finds some definitive evidence of Edward the Confessor's earlier abbey. Let's have a look and see what you've got there. <laughs> These are 11th century um, hand inside floor tiles with, with glaze on, and this is very heavily worn. This is an absolutely wonderful find. So extremely rare, this tile. It's so rare, they're only known at Westminster Abbey, yeah. and we only recognise them with, within the last five years. Absolutely wonderful. Find us some more, please. OK, I'll try. This is more than we could have hoped for because finds from Edward the Confessor's Great Abbey are like gold dust. If that isn't exciting enough, if mixed to be believed, then down here we may well have burials from something even earlier, the very first Saxon church which gave its name to Westminster. Beginning of day three here at Westminster Abbey, and completely by surprise, we seem to be uncovering the story of three churches on this site. We came here to find the lost sacristy of this man, Henry III, who built this marvellous abbey that's here today. But late yesterday afternoon, we unearthed a tile from the abbey belonging to this man, Henry's inspiration, Edward the Confessor, 200 years previously. And not only that, but we think we may have a row of burials from the very first church on this site, way back in Saxon times. And if we have, then we're sailing into completely uncharted archaeological waters. The theory rests on the orientation of these chalk-lined burials, which were discovered by Sir Gilbert Scott in the 1870s. Phil needs to find them to see if they were aligned to the earliest Saxon Westminster Abbey. Ian? Just like being on the downs, isn't it? <laughs> but there's still the little matter of whether the L-shaped building we're excavating is Henry III's long-lost sacristy. No cow pats either. <laughs> Although we're sure the walls were all originally built by Henry, Mix convinced himself that they're just corridors and nothing to do with our sacristy. But Warwick's got a new idea. He's been searching for evidence of a doorway from our building into the north transept. Although there's no sign of it on the outside, he thinks he's found it on the inside. So where's this doorway then, Warwick? All I can see is monuments and filing cabinets. Uh, yes, we, we've got quite <laughs> a few of both. Um, but there, in the middle of this bay, the central um, arch, you can see the arch is different from ah, those yes. either side. Yes. The arch stands up taller, it breaks through the windowsill. Now, that uh, moulding there is all original Henry III work. But it is very tall and narrow, isn't it? It's not like a normal doorway into a room. Yes, well, now, that's what makes it particularly interesting, because because it is so tall and narrow, yeah. it immediately says one thing. It is a processional entrance where you could walk through carrying a processional cross, which right. of course stands high above your head. Yeah. But if it's to carry a cross, that suggests it's a passage behind it and not a sacristy, doesn't it? Well, yes and no. It, it, <laughs> uh, both answers are correct. Uh, it, it is clearly processional, but I mean, uh, uh, processions can start in sacristies. And so I think what we're looking at here, potentially this, this long passage, is that this is really uh, a, a robing area and an ah, assembly right. for pro yeah. uh, procession yeah. rather than uh, a sacristy in the sense of a treasury where you keep all the valuables. I think we're understanding it. Yeah. At last, we've got a theory to satisfy Mick. I am now convinced about this. Jolly good. <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> And in the trenches, Phil's making progress too. So, does that look like as though it's in situ, Phil? Oh, it's definitely articulated. Yeah, I mean, that looks like there's a pair of legs in there, look, and there's a foot bone. So, there's the ankle yeah. in there. But it's the not the, the early Saxon chalk lined burial Phil's looking for. 
For the last two days, there's been one big question that's been bugging us. Why is our sacristy such an odd shape? Basically, it's just two corridors in an L shape. Well, we think we've got the answer, but it isn't until you get in here that you understand the logic of it. Most of us think of an abbey like this, don't we? It's beautifully decorated, highly painted. We hardly even notice areas like that one or this little room over here. But that is where the real work of an abbey gets done. And that's the logic of our sacristy. It's a place where things are stored, where things are sorted out, and where people get changed out of the public eye until they process back into the formal part of the abbey dressed in their full glory. Mick? Are you happy now? Oh, ecstatic, ecstatic. I really feel we've sorted it out. But, Helen, how does all this tie in with the documents that you've been looking at? It ties in brilliantly, and what it does is help us understand some really tricky passages in the documents. I mean, to, be to begin with, the Galilee of the sacristy. What does Galilee mean? Well, we didn't know. Nobody has known. Everybody says, what does this mean? It's so annoying. But when you realise what this place is, that it's a pr place to prepare for, for processions, that it's a place to put all your kit on and so on, but it becomes very obvious. Now, I do a few processions every year as a member of church <laughs> choir, and they're awful. If you've only got a tiny little space, that you can't organise yourself in a great long line and you don't know what you're doing. Now, if you've got this lovely space, which you could call a gallery, you can line up and you can check that you're all in the right order and you're all doing the same thing without all that huffling and shuffling and, and worry. It also sorts out the L shape because you can take a procession through into the north transept, yeah. appearing as if by magic through that lovely door. You can also take a procession into the nave, appearing as if by magic. It's absolutely ideal. Helen's talking about of Galilee. Well, yeah. I thought we were looking for a sacristy. There are two functions to a sacristy. One is to keep the holy vessels, gold and silver chalices, patterns, that sort of thing. And the best place for that here is that, that one on the other side, St Faith's Chapel. The other function is, is to keep the robes in, the vestments, the copes and so on that the clergy wear. So we're talking about two sacristies with two different functions? Yeah, most places would have had all this going on in one room. Yeah. Here they've got the luxury of keeping the, the, the clothes separate, if you like, in a, in a less secure building, but, but it's ideal to get to everywhere. So our sacristy was like the wings of a theatre. And what a theatre. Because Henry was setting the scene for the most important ceremonies in the kingdom, royal weddings, funerals and coronations. And this sort of pageantry needs a lot of room for preparation. Oh, that's pretty spectacular, wasn't it? This is a cope, and it was worn by the priests and it dates back to about 1660, and it may have been used for the coronation of King Charles II. That's beautiful. It's yes. in good nick, isn't yes. it? Yes, and wonderful, yes. What else have you got? Oh, stunning. Another cope here dating back also to Charles II, 1685, and it may have been used for his funeral, and these are still used to this day. You can see why it requires such a lot of space, can't you? I mean, this cupboard goes back, what, maybe five foot here, you pull that out, and then if you need to change as well, then that's obviously additional space, and if you've got 20, 50 people all changing in the same place, it really could be quite difficult. A bit chaotic, yes. Actually, I've just noticed over here all the work that maybe 10 or 20 monks used to do in the medieval period is nowadays reduced to an ironing board, a little rack, and uh, plenty of starch. Oh, now what? That's, that's, that's another bone. Oh, that's a jaw. Outside, Phil's got his work cut out. Hello, oh, no, there's another set of teeth. Yeah, here's the top set, and here's the bottom set. Because he's uncovering multiple burials. Be yeah. Burials on top of burials, aren't they? That's another, that's oh. another one, look. We need to find some Anglo-Saxon pottery. <laughs> well, yeah, it doesn't matter what we... Uh, Warwick was excited to see Saxon tiles last night, dating to the abbey that Edward the Confessor built before Henry. So this must be one of the oldest surviving rooms in the abbey, is it? It is. This is a wonderful space. It's known as the Pix Chamber, and it is a complete 11th century room. You won't go in anywhere older in London. It was a treasury. 
Now, these tiles, um, are, which we've dug up, um, are specimens similar to some we have here in, in the floor. Now, look down here. You can see we have a, a number of them in the floor uh, which have scratch designs on. Uh, and that, as you can see, is a, is a sort of crisscross design. Um, and this is the corner of one of those tiles. It's just brilliant, because that fits absolutely perfectly. Yes. So this is something that would have been commissioned by Edward the Confessor himself. Yes. The problem is when we focus on Henry III, we forget there was this massive, glorious building already uh, here that oh, Edward the Confessor had built. There was, yes. I mean, Edward the Confessor didn't build the first monastery here. He was rebuilding something that was here earlier. So the sanctity of this site had been established hundreds of years before the Confessor. And it's the original abbey that we're putting our resources into because nobody has ever found any archaeological evidence for it. Raksha? Yeah? You know, we're looking for those chalk line burials. Yeah. I think... Oh. I might have one. Also, what do you remember about the alignment? Yeah. It was on the skew. That's right. One should never go anywhere without a compass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are a bit on the skew, aren't they? They are. That's due east that way. <sighs> Watch this space. I know. It's a tall order to find out if this burial really was aligned with the earliest abbey at Westminster. Now then, I believe you've got some... Oh, you have got some bones down oh, here, haven't you? And Tracy has spotted something that might have been part of its fabric in the Victorian stairwell. That one there, the long one. Yeah. In there, you see the difference in the carving on that? This looks very much like Roman rustic stone carving. Oh, is that? Oh, that's carving, is it? Well, yes. You see all these medieval and post-medieval stones here, they've got dressing on them. You can see the stripes yeah. where it's carved into the surface here. They're yeah. dressing the stone for use. This one is completely different. Here, you've got this surround coming around oh, here, yeah. but that's carved. The decoration, the pattern is in relief, so it stands out. Right, yeah, I can see that. But, I mean, there isn't really a major Roman site right near the abbey, is there? Not right near the abbey, no, but the theory is it could well have come from the earliest phase of abbey building, and then it's just been incorporated into walls much later on. It's a fab thing to find, though. That's really nice. <laughs> Everybody involved in the Abbey is on tenterhooks to find out what else we can discover about this historic site in the final hours of the dig. Jackie's already identified several burials, including an eight-year-old child. Their alignment and level suggest that they're probably from the time of Edward the Confessor. But what we really want is to pin down a date for the chalk-lined burial. This has definitely been disturbed by the Victorians. Has it? Yeah, this is all Victorian backfill that's in here. And this means that any finds from the grave might be misleading. Usually finds are vital clues for us, and this dig has produced vast quantities, which the students of Westminster School are helping us process. <laughs> what we need is something datable from the very bottom of the grave. That looks more like a bit of tile or brick to me. That's not pottery. But you can't give us a date on it. Hey, it's tile or brick, mate. It's not my job, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sorry. The good news is that now we can see the chalk-lined grave, it's clearly on a totally different alignment to the later burials. So this ought to be associated with an early the Saxon church. Exactly. That would be incredible, It would it? be fantastic. And in order to be able to work out the date of the building to which this grave relates, what we need to do is to take a small sample of bone from the leg and have that radiocarbon dated. What about pottery dating, though, Paul? Uh, one really interesting bit we have got is this. Now, this is from much higher up in the general jumble, but it's a piece of Saxon pottery. It's late Saxon Shelley were, uh, late 9th to early 11th century, so pre-Edward the Confessor. Warwick, does, does it make sense that that 
piece of plot is pre-Edward the Confessor. Oh, yes, that, that is wonderful. I mean, you forget that. I mean, the fact that we've now got um, a Saxon pottery of the period, probably of Dunstan, who uh, founded the church before Edward the Confessor, uh, and now if we've got a grave that could easily be of that period also, we're beginning to get new horizons in the archaeology of Westminster. Has anyone ever found anything associated with Dunstan on this site? No, we do not know anything about Dunstan's church or quite where it was or anything structural to do with it. We haven't anything. And this and the grave could be the first uh, solid indications uh, that we've got. St Dunstan founded a Benedictine abbey on what was then Thorny Island in the 10th century. But there are stories of an even earlier church. At the end of the day, after six hours solid digging, Phil finds more evidence that the grave predates Henry III's sacristy. I reckon I've cracked it. Go on. I reckon this wall cuts this grave. In other words, the grave is earlier. No, that is just what we want, really, isn't it? Splendid. Absolutely sure about it now. Good. But the final piece of the jigsaw will be the radiocarbon date. If I put you on the rack, what date would you say that burial was? Oh, you don't want much, do you? <laughs> um, around 9.50. Oh. Not good enough, That's too late. Go on. That's too late. I, I think it should be earlier than that. I think it'd be, too, it'd be nice if it was about 800. So we're 99.9% <laughs> sure that this burial is Anglo-Saxon, which is a first for Westminster Abbey, but it all depends on that one little bit of bone. I wonder what date it'll be. We've had quite a journey here at Westminster Abbey. We came here to find Henry III's lost sacristy, and in doing so, we've discovered it had a totally unique role. It was the backstage area for the spectacular royal processions that were at the very heart of Henry's groundbreaking design. But the totally unexpected find was the first evidence of an early Saxon church, which we now think was built on a different orientation. Because the carbon date suggests our burial dates from the early 11th century, earlier than Edward the Confessor. And this was a critical period when King Canute built the very first royal palace next to Dunstan's Abbey and the stage was set for greatness.